Right, this is Alex with Detroit Dartworks. Um, today we're going to go over the Cheetah 2 2.0 one pull kit version 5. Uh, it's been a long time coming for me to sit down and make another of these uh, assembly videos. I didn't really do it for version 4 because nothing much had changed besides the size of some of the pieces, but assembly was the same. But version 5 changes a few pieces. So we have updated the collet for the front of the one pull kit, uh, redesigned the threads, and it now uses this little collet nut. Uh, this is a old fusion design style collet nut. Uh, I worked with him, he's a good friend of mine, uh, to kind of design this based on his turbine scar system, which you should totally check out if you are looking for a great uh, 3D printed scar. Uh, strung scar, but so we'll go through the entire process from start to finish uh, In case you are new to the one pull kit so Coming in your one pull kit if you got the printed parts and hardware you should have seven uh, 1032 nuts two 1032 lock nuts a single 1032 screw and two foot long uh, 1032 threaded rods with some uh, rod covers cut to about 26 centimeters or so. Um, I went ahead and put my threaded rod covers into the middle of the threaded rods beforehand. Uh, they just slide on. They can be a bit of a tight fit, but that's good. Uh, so go ahead and do that now. Um, depending on how these are cut, you might need to trim them. Uh, so, you know, you go through the assembly process, you tighten everything up, and if they're too long, uh, take some parts back off, trim the little bit off you need, and then go through it again. Um, I try to leave a little extra on there uh, just in case, but really they're only needed for the amount that it's going to move on the slide here. They don't actually need to cover the whole thing, uh, just the part that's going to be moving back and forth. So it's not a big deal if they're too short. Um, but anyway, so start off, take your assembled Cheetah 2.0, and you're going to take your rail piece. You'll notice there's some cutouts here. Uh, those go towards the back of the blaster. So start by positioning it between the iron sight and the front. Slide it over the rail and push back till it slides into position. Take a single hex nut, drop it in its recess, and take your screw and thread that in. Get a screwdriver to finish it off. Now when putting the screw in, you just want to make sure that both the head is flush or underneath the side of the rail, as are the threads on this side. That way they won't interfere with the rods at all. I'll do it right there. It doesn't have to be completely tightened all the way down, you just want it tightened enough that the rail is locked in place. Uh, next, we're going to set this aside for a second and we're going to assemble the rods to the pole in the back. I like to do this beforehand. Uh, there, You can do it in a different order if you choose to. I know some people like to put this on, thread the rods up through and do it that way. I prefer this way. So take your threaded rod, take a nut, and thread it onto the back of the rod down to about where your rod cover is. Do that on both of them. Like that. Now take this, insert that rod through here, and take one of your lock nuts, tighten that down, there we go, over the end of your rod. These rods are getting a little chewed up. This is my personal cheetah, and I've taken apart and reassembled it a few times, and some of the threads are a little messy on it. I'll leave that there. Put this to the other side. And throw that down. Now, one thing I have done on occasion, 
mostly just personal preference, is I'll occasionally stick an extra 1032 nut between the lock nut and this just to give it a little extra room there. Um, there's not really a need to do that unless you're seeing that for whatever reason on your kit, mainly due to how you position the front, if this pull is not close enough to the handle, that'll get it a little closer without having to put this front up through all the way through to the very front like that. Um, but again, that's personal preference. So once those are in, just back those nuts back into it about like so. And you can tighten this down a little bit more if you want to. I'm just going to leave it there for the purposes of this instructional. All right. So now that that's done, set that aside, come back to our cheetah. And here we are going to put our front on. So to start off, you just slip it over the top, just like that. Now take your collet nut and you're going to see there's a longer side and a shorter side. You're going to take that longer side and put it towards the body of the cheetah and just drop it down into the threads there. And then you're going to take your collet itself, put it on there and just give it a few twists just to get it attached where it'll still slide. With the barrel completely closed, you're going to want to position this just a, maybe a millimeter or so ahead of this orange piece, just so you're not having the uh, print collide with that when you pull it all the way back. And then you're going to tighten your collet in. And this will move around a little bit as I do it. It's just important that by the end we have it positioned where we want it. Now, sometimes this might get a little tight depending on printer tolerances, um, and just how your barrel is, humidity even. Uh, this can get a little tight and can be rough on your hands. So there is an optional uh, collet wrench that will come uh, with the kits. Um, that are included in the file set under the optional files. You can use that to get a little extra purchase. Just slip it on. And I like to grip it like this so the PLA doesn't bend too much. And just use that to finish cinching down. There you go. And it starts slipping and there we go. Pretty tight. And that is right where I want it. About a millimeter ahead of the orange piece. And again, it doesn't, the, the spacing here is not crucial, just as long as it's not contacting that orange piece so that you're not wearing on the plastic or the uh, printed part or the ABS parts here. So with that done, we are now going to put that to the side and come back to our pull. Insert your thread rods through the rail guide, going through both channels. And once it's through both channels, now put those nuts back on. If you are choosing to convert this over to metric hardware uh, using M5 nuts, those will usually fit through the holes here. Uh, and my mind was still stuck back on the old metric hardware I used to use with these. That's why. So now the nuts are on, line those up with the holes, flip your blaster upside down, take your last two hex nuts and drop them into the recesses here. One, there's two. Now push this up to it and you're going to want to start threading these in. Now this, I'll get that one back in a second. This is the tedious part uh, because you gotta get them to thread through right and you gotta keep them even. If you don't keep threading them evenly, uh, doing a little bit here and a little bit on this side, you're gonna kind of bind up uh, at an angle with these rods. So one thing I found that does help is to have a 3 8 inch wrench or socket uh, to kind of speed that process along. So just use that. So once you get kind of close to the end, you're going to start needing to position everything right. Your end goal is to have this pull not touching the back, but very close to it. So I'm going to adjust my nuts back a little bit. Move the threaded rod covers back a little bit. 
get these, a little more space up here. At this point, it's just a game of fine tuning to get everything in the right position. So whenever you feel like you've gotten it positioned, you can test it by keeping it open, priming the blaster, and then checking to make sure the barrel is closed all the way. As long as the barrel has seated all the way, when the blaster is primed, it's far enough back. Um, as always, if you have any issues with assembly, feel free to contact me uh, through the shop or through uh, direct email me. Uh, DetroitDartWorks at gmail.com. I'm always happy to help out uh, with your assembly. Yeah, this one needs a little bit of... Right, there we go. So we'll tighten that down, get that thread rod up, and uh, button her up and call it a day. Thank you for uh, sticking through this assembly video. I hope it helps. I hope I didn't forget anything. And uh, Thank you guys for all your support, uh, for helping me continue on in this hobby. Uh, all my designs are things I designed for myself. Um, and then if people show interest, I stick them up on the shop. All the money that goes from selling kits, selling files, goes right back into the hobby and helps me you know, maintain the hobby and also keep developing new fun stuff to build. Uh, new mods, new add-ons, stuff like that. So uh, your patronage is, as always, much appreciated. And take care, everyone, and we'll see you next time.